Are you scared by this image? Be comforted by the fact that the skeleton not only provides rigidity and structure to our body, it's essential for the protection of vital organs like the lungs, the heart, and most importantly, the brain. So the skeleton is a vast structure and in order to make it easier to study, what we do is we break it down into two different parts. So over here, the part that you see in white, that part is called axial skeleton. Axial stands for axis. So this is the central axis of the body and the axial skeleton is present very close to the axis, hence the name. Now the brown part the rest of the skeleton, all these parts, they are called appendicular skeleton. Why appendicular? Because our hands and legs, these are appendages. So appendages are things that are attached to the main body and these appendicular skeletons provide support to our appendages. Hence, they are called appendicular skeleton. So in this video, we will look at different parts of the axial skeleton and what bones make it up. So uh, let's go to this part first, our skull. So these are two views of our skull and the one in red, this part is made up of cranial bones. All these cranial bones they cover the entire head and they're also present inside the eye sockets and what about the blue part these bones the blue bones are called facial bones because as you can see they make up the face now other than the cranial bones and the facial bones the skull has a few more bones six of them are present inside the ear so this is our external ear and if you go inside here is the middle ear and here are the ear ossicles so we call them ear ossicles ossicles are nothing but small bones so they are really really small small as you can see so what are these bones called you might have studied them in a lower grade this bone right here is called the malleus. It's a hammer shaped bone. And the next bone, this one right here, it's called the incus. It's an anvil shaped bone. And the last one is a stirrup shaped bone and is called the stapes. The last bone that we're going to talk about in the skull is a bit weird. So as you can see, it is present below the jaw and in front of the throat. So it's called the hyoid. And as you can see, it seems to be hanging in the air. So that's not done by any other bone. They are connected to some or the other bone, but this one is not then how does it stay in place? How does it not fall down? That's because even though it's not connected to any bone, it is connected to muscles and it helps in uh, the movement of the tongue, the movement of the throat, etc. So that's what we have in the skull, the cranial bones, the facial bones, the ear ossicles and the hyoid. Now let's move over to the vertebral column. So the vertebral column, I'm sure you know, it's our backbone, it's present in the back, of course. And the vertebral column is made up of these small units called the vertebrae. And there are different kinds of vertebrae depending on the level at which they are found. So the vertebrae at the level of the neck, these are called the cervical vertebrae. Cervical in Latin means neck, hence the name. This portion, this entire portion is the chest region and these vertebrae are called thoracic vertebrae. Thorax means chest. So there are seven cervical vertebrae, 12 thoracic vertebrae and then in this region, the lower back, we have five vertebrae which are called the lumbar vertebrae. They are five in number and lumbar relates to loin. So loin is 
lower abdomen region. So that's what the lumbar vertebrae support. That's why they're called the lumbar vertebrae. And below the lumbar vertebrae, we have this white bone and this is the sacrum. There is just one vertebra. It's the sacrum. In other animals and in our ancestors, they used to be separate vertebrae. But in us, all those separate vertebrae have fused, have joined to form one single vertebra, sacrum, which forms the base of our vertebral column. And the last vertebra is the coccyx. And you might have heard it is also the tailbone. It's also one in number. Again, like in other animals, there are coccygeal vertebrae. There are a few coccygeal vertebrae, separate ones. But in us, they have all been fused together to form one bone. And what does it do in us? It has absolutely no function. We do not have a tail. So in us, it's a vestigial organ. So this is all about the vertebrae. Now, the thoracic vertebrae, they are, as you can see in this picture, connected to the ribs. So we come to the ribs. So there are 12 ribs on each side and each of the ribs are connected to the thoracic vertebrae at the back. So 12 thoracic vertebrae, 12 ribs. And at the front, they are connected to this bone, which is called the sternum. So depending on how they're connected to the sternum, the ribs have different names. Okay, so first let me name, let me label the sternum bone. This is the sternum. The first seven ribs, they are directly connected to the sternum through cartilage, of course. So these white things, they are not the ribs themselves, they are cartilage. But all of these seven ribs, they are connected separately to the sternum. All of these ribs, they are separate from each other and they are connected to the sternum and are called true ribs. Why? We will see in a second. The next three ribs, this, this and this, eighth, ninth and tenth ribs, they are not directly connected to the sternum. Instead, if you notice, they are connected to this cartilage of the seventh rib. All of these ribs, eighth, ninth and tenth, they are connected to their own cartilage, which join and they in turn join to the cartilage of the seventh rib, which finally connects to the sternum. So these three ribs are not directly connected to the sternum, but through the cartilage of the seventh rib. Hence, they are called false ribs. That doesn't mean the ribs don't carry out their function. They are ribs. It's just a nomenclature that we follow for our own understanding. And the last two ribs, as you can see, these two ribs, they do not have any cartilage of their own at all. So the 11th and 12th ribs, they don't have any cartilage. They are not connected to the sternum. So they are not connected to the sternum and are called floating ribs. They seem to float, hence are called floating ribs. So to summarize, we have seen that the axial skeleton is made up of the skull which has the cranial bones which covers the head then the facial bones which covers the face then there are the ear ossicles in the middle ear and the hyoid below the jaw in front of the throat and then there are the vertebrae in the vertebral column neck region cervical vertebrae chest region thoracic vertebrae lower back region lumbar vertebrae base of the vertebral column sacrum and the tailbone the coccyx and then there is the sternum in the front. And then there are these 12 ribs. The first seven ribs are the true ribs. The eighth, ninth, and tenth ribs are the false ribs. And the last two ribs are the floating ribs. And together, the sternum, the ribs, and the vertebrae, they form the rib cage inside which are housed the lungs and the heart.